anyone who's seen Marvel Studios Loki knows that we are exploring new corners of the MCU, which is why I'm speaking with VFX supervisor Brad Parker. Hey, Brad. Hey there. So let's speak a little bit about the Time Variance Authority. It's the first new location we get to see Loki in. How would you describe the overall aesthetic of the TVA? Well, the TVA has this really cool sort of retro futuristic look to it. There are elements of sort of analog technology and early 1980s digital technology mixed with a few technologies that are very much from the future. So that sort of mashed together into this very unique aesthetic, but has this kind of patina of being something that may have happened in the past, even though the size, scope, and scale of it feels like it must be in the future. It really is appropriately a timeless look, and you can really see that in the expanse at the TVA. How do you take actors and put them into a shot like that? Everything beyond the window that Loki and Mobius are standing in front of was created digitally. On set, we had a hallway and a window frame, and our actors were able to look out into a blue screen, but everything beyond that was created entirely in the computer. So then once you have all of those elements, how do you build out The Expanse with your team? So building something like The Expanse takes um, a lot of artists building a lot of individual elements. That can run anywhere from the basic architecture, meaning the sort of columns and posts and walls that comprise the structures inside The Expanse, but also atmospheric effects like clouds and fog and little vehicles flying around. An insane amount of detail goes into creating something like The Expanse. Another place that we see that immense detail is at the archives at the TVA. What kind of work goes into filling out that space? Yeah, so the archives are really interesting. Um, production actually filmed in a, uh, a real hotel in Atlanta, and the archives were sort of an extension of that. So that's a good example of digital set extensions where we started with a real place, but the real place wasn't as large and you know didn't create this kind of infinite archive feel but it did give us a really good guide as to what the architecture would be and what sort of the palette of the space would be. So we were able to kind of riff off of that and build something much larger, much more infinite looking based on that kind of real world practical photography. And that's something that I would add is that when you're able to mix real places with visual effects, the results are often very, very believable. It's a great way to work. So could you talk us through the layers that pull together that whole shot? When we're creating a digital set extension, we'll get what's called a plate. And a plate is basically the photography with no visual effects. And we'll match the lens. So anything that we build digitally looks like it was photographed by the cinematographer. The next step would be to add a 3D model that represents the architecture and details. Things like, you know, all the books on the bookshelves, for example. All of those details are combined together into a shot that's then composited. Absolutely incredible. But now let's fast forward to the end of the series where we go on this epic journey to the Citadel. What goes into bringing that kind of sequence to life? So in order to create this travel through time and space, um, we started with a rough guide that the editorial department put together. This was a series of clips and pre-visualizations of the sort of travel experience, you know, which planets we'd pass by, which black holes we'd travel through, and how long the entire sequence might take. So based on that, our team of digital artists started to create sort of space geography, those structures, the material that we travel through, the black holes that we travel through, and kind of place them all out into a sequence that's then sort of approved by the director and, and our editors. Once that is all approved, we work on refining it and making it look believable and realistic. So in this case, it's creating sort of gaseous space elements and, you know, believable planets and the timeline itself, the sacred timeline, which all kind of ends at the Citadel, where he who remains resides. The process for creating that was really to kind of sculpt what this planetoid would be like in three dimensions. And we built the Citadel, all the architecture, you know, every last brick to put the place together in the computer and place that on top of the Citadel. And that was a sort of creation that was based on some conceptual art that was drawn by a very talented artist. And our team of digital artists kind of built that or realized it in 3D. Ultimately, it's all rendered and composited together to be one seamless experience. That moment is such a big whirlwind. Are there any little details that our Marvel fans might have missed that you could clue us in on? So, you know, there was a hidden detail or two. There are a few little elements that we pass by. One might be the collector's ship. Um, 
can't confirm nor deny that. And there may be one or two that are worth kind of scrubbing through slowly and seeing if you can pick out. Ooh, you know I'm gonna do that. Now, as you look back at the conclusion of this epic series, what are you most proud of? So I'd say the thing that I'm most proud of um, is kind of working with this team of incredible artists who all had to work from home, you know, because of uh, COVID lockdown. Together, everyone was able to create something that's absolutely stunning and beautiful. Everybody really stepped up and worked as hard as they possibly could. And I'm just really proud of the team and everything they did to make this beautiful series. Oh, that's so lovely. Thank you so much, Brad. And of course, everyone, go watch Marvel Studios' Loki. All episodes are now streaming only on Disney+.